All right, Jim Horman. Well, thanks for joining us today. You'll be doing two sessions at the National No Tillage Conference. You'll be doing a classroom on biologicals and a general session on digging deep into nutrient content and function. So let's start with the bio biologicals classroom. And of course, biological products, they've often been called the wild west of farming. So what kind of insights can attendees expect from your classroom on biologicals? Well, we've got a lot of different biologicals. Um, probably what I'm going to look at is more the practical ones. Uh, some of the different um, uh, bacteria, the fungus, and uh, which ones we can actually apply. But also, I think farmers need to understand uh, the different functions. So, you know, we got mycorrhizal fungi. There's like 250 of those. Uh, there's maybe 30 that, uh, 34 to 35 that I know of that infect corn and about 30 some that infect soybeans. So the, the hardest part with biologicals is you have to know what you're starting out with and then you got to figure out what you need and then where do you get them? And none of those are easy. They're all expensive. So that makes it a little bit tough. But, you know, for example, uh, we've got fungus, we've got bacteria. Um, we've got the rhizobacteria. A lot of people talk about them, but something most people haven't learned a whole lot about is the pseudomonas. And those pseudomonas are the ones that are involved in rhizophagy. And uh, so if you've got those pseudomonas bacteria in your soil, which most of us do, they're kind of like a double-edged sword, though. Some of them, uh, under the right conditions, they really help the, the crop to grow, but under bad conditions, they cause a lot of disease. So you got to have the right soil in order to make all those work. So we'll talk about the living. And then just as a, a teaser, probably one of the biggest ones, we'll talk about some amino acids and some enzymes, uh, especially arginine. Arginine's used by the mycorrhizae, the uh, uh, pseudomonas, and uh, the um, uh, rhizobacteria in order to infect the root to get inside. So there's all kinds of things. I'll even be talking about sugars and all these other things, seaweed and how we can use some of these on the farm to make the biological system work a little bit better. And now in your other session, I know you'll be digging deep into micronutrients and cover crops. And what are some other things we could expect from your uh, general session? Well, there's, there's some real good understanding what micronutrients do most of our micronutrients are involved with um, uh, enzymes. They're, yeah, they're all key elements in making enzymes and uh, turning proteins into enzymes so that they work for us. And if you don't have the micronutrients, one of the big things I'll talk about is how if you get too much of the, the major elements, sometimes they will tie up some of the micronutrients. So you got to have everything in balance. Uh, one of the newest things that I'll be talking about is uh, new research from the University of uh, Northwestern. Um, they found out, and of course, I, I've been talking about probably for the last seven to 10 years, but they quantified it, that we thought only phosphorus was only made available by um, uh, certain solubilizing bacteria. And they discovered that about 50% of our phosphorus is actually released from soil organic matter uh, by iron, which is a nutrient in our soil. So if you have soils that are high in iron, probably what's happening is you could be losing a lot of soluble reactive phosphorus uh, through, your, through your soils. And uh, that's something that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, uh, under saturated soil conditions, iron releases phosphorus from soil organic matter. So we'll talk about those relationships and, and, and of course, all the other micronutrients. I've got a whole, whole set on uh, all the different things, what our micronutrients do for us. So that'll be a summary. Yeah, I'm looking forward to both your presentations. I know you always come with a lot of information and it's a lot of information to squeeze into an hour session. Yes. What could people expect from a Jim Horman presentation? I know, they'll get your money's worth. I've been called fire hose because there's just so much information you can't write it down all at one time. So, <laughs> yeah, but the good news is I do make my PowerPoints available and uh, I would prefer people just listen and then you can go back and I've had people go back and reread them two, three, four times and say, I just keep finding more information in there all the time that how it applies to your farm. So we'll try to make it as practical as we can, but expect it to be a little bit like a fire hose, drinking from a fire hose. So unfortunately, that's my style. <laughs> and you've been to the National No-Till Conference, I know, several times. What do you really like about this conference? 
Uh, what's nice is uh, seeing all the farmers and uh, getting together and uh, people from all over the country. I mean, it just it's it's just so nice to it's almost like a reunion when you go to these these conferences, you see people. I don't make it every year, but when I'm down there, it just seems like everybody knows who you are and everybody wants to talk to you. And, and uh, it's just great to get around and, and see everybody. I we'll look forward to seeing you there. And uh, thanks for joining us for this uh, no till conference preview, Jim. Looking forward to it. Thank you.